We're going to go way, way back to grade nine. Way back. Might have even been first semester. And the one thing I love about math is when you go back in time, it suddenly gets so much easier. So let's just look at this guy from grade nine. Like at the time, people were like, what? X is Y. Why is the alphabet in here? But now that I say simplify, this is not so bad. So in grade nine, we probably started by circling the like terms. Because we were like, whoa, we're just baby mathematicians. And then we taught you about adding and how the variable doesn't change, and it's just something. And if you have three of something and you take away two of something, how many of the somethings do you have left? One. So we would call this just x. And then we're like, ooh, let's box the y's because they're different. And then you have nine of something, and you have four. Oh, I told you, five of something, and you have four of something. And then how many somethings do you have? So nine y. James, what are you doing? Like, seriously, last year you didn't talk at all. You're like Mr. Chatty Pants this year. I did, yeah, like a week ago. Oh, yeah, thank you. It was for the wedding. My mother didn't like red hair, so I had to change it. Now let's look at this. So at first you're like, whoa, there's radicals. It's the exact same thing as grade nine. You have three root x's and you have negative two root x's. How many root x's do you have? And then you have five root y's and you have four root y's. And how many root y's do you have? It's exactly the same as adding polynomials. They just happen to have a root. Well, sometimes we won't put variables. We'll put numbers under the roots. And that's exactly the same thing. If you have three root threes and you have negative two root threes, how many root threes do you have? One root three. And if you have five root twos and you have another four root twos, how many root twos do you have? Nine root two. And whenever I put note, that means it's something really important. So I always grab red pen to write the note. It means there's something different about this one or something I want to highlight. Why? Why would you just not like her in there? Why? I always think whoever watches these videos have no idea what I'm talking about. Like, I seem like I'm just randomly shouting out things. So this one's usually obvious. People understand if you have three root x and minus two root x and you put them together, you have one root x. The problem is when we put numbers, people try to do weird things. And people will try to add those root threes, and they'll get root six. Or they'll try to multiply those root threes and get root nine. You'll notice the roots don't change when you're adding and subtracting. If you have three root threes and minus two root threes, we have one root three. And if you have five root two and four root two, we have nine root two. So notice that the radicand, the radicand does not change. So then we put numbers, people try to add and subtract everything. The radicands don't change, they just tag along. They will when we multiply, but not when we add or subtract. This is where we're going to go to paper, because this is like the real example number one. So put adding and subtracting radicals at the top of your paper. We're going to start slow and work our way up to the hard examples. What are you doing? What, what's going on there? <laughs> Why are you just randomly playing with cards? Hmm. Uh, method number one. Simplify all radicals. Whoops. That's why we practiced simplifying yesterday, because it's step one of this. Number two, combine like radicals. Way back in grade nine, you learned about like terms. What's the definition of a like term? What do they have to have the same? Same variable and same exponent. Same variable and same exponent. What do you think a like radical has to have the same? Same radicand and same index. So same radicand 
and index. So I always think about it like names. And generally, people in a family have the same last name, but their first name can be different. Imagine if everyone had the same first name in a family. It's the same thing with this. The coefficient in front can be different, because that's like your first name. But what comes in the back, it's like the last name has to be the same. So same radicand, same index in order to combine them. Do you have your title down? Step number one, we do what we did yesterday. We just see, hmm, can I simplify this? So we look at the three. And if I were to prime factor three, would I have anything in there that I could take the square root of? Is it somebody I want to talk to? Yeah. Oh, okay, let him in then. Someone closer to the door. Whoever's, thank you. That was a very, very long trip to the bathroom. It's like a 12-minute trip. Now that's recorded. See, no one's going to have any idea what I talked about. Can we simplify anything with a 3? Answer is no. There's nothing now because the prime factoring is 3 times 1. Now we're just going to combine. Are these like radicals or are they not like radicals? Do they have the same radicand? Yes. Do they have the same index? Yes. So all we're doing is just putting the coefficients together. If I have 1 root 3 and another 4 root 3, what do I have? 5 root 3. Notice the radicand did not change. I just multi or added the coefficients together. That's as simple as they're going to get. Same index, same radicand makes them like radicals. Let's do some cube roots. Cube root of 7 minus cube root of 5. First thing we just want to look is can we simplify? Is there anything I can factor out of a 7 that I'm going to be able to take the square root of? No, it's prime. What about the 5? No, it's prime. Are they like radicals? No. So this is like in grade 9 if I gave you x minus y. And I said simplify x minus y. How would you simplify it? It is simplified. There's nothing you can do with it. This is also simplified, so we would just restate it as itself. Ooh. Don't leave it blank. Blank tells me you didn't know what to do. You can write already simplified. You can write NA, not applicable. You can rewrite it. Just don't leave it blank because that tells me you didn't know. Okay, so don't try to simplify if you can't. If you can't, you can't. You just leave it. That is as simple as we can get it. Oh, number three. We're going to add a whole bunch of stuff here. A root three, a minus five root two, a plus six root two, and a minus seven root three. Can I simplify anything? Can I simplify the three? The two, the two, the three. Can't do anything with it. So this is a straight added up. Waiting. Because it's three times one, right? If you liked the circling thing from way back in grade nine, if that's what your brain needed, then circle them. So if I have root three minus seven root three, how many root threes do I have? Minus six root threes. And then if I have minus 5 root 2s and I have 6 root 2s, how many root 2s do I have? Not, not a trick question. Minus 5 plus 6. 1 root 2. Okay, so if your brain likes the circles, do the circles. If the circles do nothing for you, don't do the circles. Totally up to you. Number 4. How about I write down all of number four instead of half of number five? <laughs> Lefties understand. <laughs> See, a real lefty would just throw out this whole piece of paper and start over. We can't help it. We just hate when it looks like that. Cube root of 54 plus cube root of 16. This is why we have that step one, which we didn't have to do in one, two, and three. But if you were to just look at these, you'd be like, nope, not like radicals, can't do anything with it. Well, we have to go through the simplifying process we did yesterday. So 54, let's break it down. What do you want to start with? What times what? 
two times. Two is prime. What would you like to break 27 down into? Three and nine. Three is prime. What would you like to break nine down into? Three and three, prime, prime. Smush that all together. Three to the three times. You don't need to do a tree. You don't even need to show me this. As long as you show me the three squared or three cubed times two, I'm good with that. Let's do the 16 while we're at it. Four and four. Two and two and two and two. Now I don't want to write that as two to the four because I want to group it in three. So I'm going to write it as two cubed times two. So coming back up here, I now have the cube root of 3 cubed times 2 plus the cube root of 2 cubed times 2. I'm a circler, so I like to circle the things with cubes because I know they're going to come out front. Anything not circled is going to stay behind. What happens to the cubed on this 3 when I take it out front? Cancel, so I'm just going to have 3 in front. What's going to be left? Cube root of 2. And make sure you're keeping that cube root, so that little index all the way along. What happens to the cubed on the 2 when I bring it out front? Cancels, leaves me 2. What's left? Cube root of 2. If we hadn't simplified and had just said, nope, not like radicals, we would have missed this because once we simplify, they are like radicals. So this is just step one. Now I'm just going to combine it. If I have three of something and two more of something, how many somethings do I have? Final answer is five cube root of two. Thumbs up, thumbs aside, thumbs down, where are we on that? Good. Questions? Anything you don't see where it came from? Optional, optional. I don't care how you get the factors. If you can jump straight to here, I'm okay with that. They have the same index that gets moved behind the radical. Not sure what you mean. Okay, so whatever has the cubed gets canceled and comes outside. Anything that doesn't have the cube stays behind. Does that answer? Yes, because the index is three. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Did I answer? Number five. Square root of 75b to the five minus b, b squared, or index of two. How do we know that's a squared and not a little index of two? because we wouldn't have an index of 2, and we would be under that little line. So this is a b squared, and then negative 135, b to the 4. Did I do it again? How about a 32b? OK, 75. I jump right to 5 squared. We're okay with that. Notice I didn't do it as a tree this time. Do it whatever way you want. Just make sure you can get those factors. Let's do 32 while we're at it. So in total, I'm going to have five twos, but what do I want to break it into? Groups, Groups of two. Can you see that's kind of squishy? Or you can combine this into two to the four. That's fine, however your brain likes it better. 
and you see that it's pretty small. Okay, so let's come back over here. 45 is going to be our 3 times 5 squared, and then I got to do something with those b's. What do you want to do with b to the 5? Exactly what we did yesterday. Exactly what we did over here with the 2's. b to the 5. So b to the 2. Don't leave me hanging. B to the 2, B. You have a choice. You can absolutely make this B to the 4 because that's still divisible by 2. Okay, the second one, I got this B squared out front. I'll deal with him later. The 32 we just said was a B squared times a B squared times a 2. I meant a 2 squared, but I said B squared. A 2 squared times a 2 squared times a 2. And then that B is still hanging back there. Casey. You can, but you want this in groups of two, and three is bigger than two. So that's why you want to do two and two and the one left over. Again, my brain just works when I circle the things that are going to come out front, and I leave the ones that are not. If that does not work for you, do not feel you have to do that. So a five is going to come out front, a B is going to come out front, a B is going to come out front, and I'm going to simplify them in the next step. If you want to simplify right away, go ahead. Left is a 3B. I still have this B squared out there, so I'll just leave him out there. A 2 is going to come out, a 2 is going to come out, a 2B is going to left. It's going to be left. And now I'm just going to simplify the two coefficients. A 5 times a B times a B. 5B squared. If you wanted to jump right to that, that's fine. And here I have a negative b squared times a 2 times a 2. Negative 4b squared, and I have my 2b left. I'm just going to kind of bracket this step. If you don't want to show that step, that's A-OK. -okay. Whew, that's only step one. That's just the simplifying. What do we need to do now? Now we need to actually see if they're like, but like radicals. Same radicand. No. So what do I do? Well, I can't do this question. Forget it. I'm just going to rip this test up. Yeah. Is it, can we simplify? Thank you, Aaron. Can we simplify? Can we simplify? No. So this is it. This is final answer. Don't try to force things to simplify that aren't going to. That's it. Done. Radicand is the same and index is the same. And this has the same index, but radicands are completely different. This is about as hard as they're going to get, this guy here. Three B, now is that a B cubed or is that an index of three? How do you know it's an index of three? It's under that little ticky line on a radical. So I always tend to write them a little bit separate just so my brain doesn't confuse it. Okay, so that's the only reason I put the space there is just so I can keep that little index away from that variable and not get confused. Okie dokie. Where do you want to start? Okay, let's start with the 40 then. Is he in trouble? He looks very guilty. Okay, for once. Good job. How do I want to group this? Groups of two, groups of three, groups of three. Why groups of three? Because the index is three, so I'm going to make this two cubed and five. Joe, put the phone down. I don't have mine out. Okay, what do you want to do with the second binomial or second radical? You can bring the negative down here or not. doesn't matter. I know that negative's above, so I can just kind of leave it there. 
Okay, 135. Doesn't divide by 2. That sucks. Ooh. And what do you know about 27? And what do you know about 9? So it's going to be 3 and 3 and 3. So a 3 squared times 5. Uh, 3 cubed, I totally meant. Doing okay so far? Okay, so we got this 3B hanging out front. We'll just leave them there. We're going to take our 40, make it 3 cubed times 5, and then I got a B in the back. I meant, I wrote 2 cubed, but wrote, said 3 cubed. I want a 2 cubed. Then I got this negative 2 in the second part. And here's where just make sure that negative's coming down from that negative 135. So I have a negative 3 cubed and a 5. And what do I want to do with that b to the fourth? b cubed times b. Circling everything with a cube because I know it's going to come out front. So I got a 3b already hanging around there. Just leave them there. What's going to come out front? The 2 and what happens to the exponent. So I'm just going to tuck them in the back and I'll simplify him in a second. If you want to jump right to the simplifying, that's fine. What's left under my cube root? Then I have the negative 2 that's already there. What happens to this negative 3 cubed? And I'm going to bring the negative with him, so I'm going to bracket him, and I'll deal with it later, but that negative's just going to tag along. What happens to the b cubed? Just b. Thanks, Ethan. And what's left under here? A 5b. And some people can already see, oh, 5b, 5b, something good's going to happen here. But let's deal with these coefficients first and just tidy them up. So if I have a 3 times a b times a 2, 6b, followed by cube root of 5b. And here I've got a negative 2 times a negative 3 times a b, positive 6b, and I have the cube root of 5b hanging on the end. So all that work was just from yesterday. That's all step one. Now we've got to actually do step two. Are they like radicals? How do you know? Same radicand, same index. So how do we combine these? Well, we just add the coefficients. What's 6b and 6b? 12b followed by the cube root of 54. Uh, why did I say 54? I'm not having a good verbal day today. 5B, sorry, sorry, microphone. The minus times minus. Oh, yeah, okay. You see it? Yeah. Good question. That's as hard as they're going to get. Oh, and then a word problem right at the end. Oh, stupid word problems. <laughs> read to read. Don't overthink it. Just read it like it's a sentence in a book. <laughs> yep. That's what engineers come up with, stupid engineers. Yeah. This is probably what your brain did on read to read. It probably caught perimeter, square, side length, blah, blah, blah. And that's okay. That's why we read to read, because now we're going to go back. So obviously, perimeter, mathy word, very important. Square, mathy word, very important. This whole blah, blah, blah is very important, and we just need to attach something to it what is that blah, blah, blah? Side length. And then there's probably another important word. Simplest. Telling you we need to do it as simple as possible. Thoughts. What do we know about perimeter? Oh, every side added up. And the way I remember that, because a lot of people mix up area and perimeter, if you look in the middle of perimeter, you see the word rim. And what do you know about the rim of something? It's the outside. So that's how I remember that perimeter is the outside, not the area. 
What do we know about a square? Four sides. What do we know about radicals and simplifying them? We've got to simplify them like we did yesterday. I'm going to try to squeeze this in the bottom. When you have the side length of a square and you are going to the perimeter, totally spelt it wrong after highlighting perimeter, what do you do? Which is 4 in this case. So the perimeter, and I'm just using capital P because we're lazy and don't like to write out words, is going to be 4 times this whole blah blah. I could. Yeah, I could bracket, not bracket. Now what? Oh, what do you want to do with 27? Okay. What would you like to break 27 into? So if you need to do the 3, 9 first and then 9 into 3, 3, that's fine. If you can jump right to the 3, 3, then jump. What do you want to do with this W to the 4? Well, we probably want to break them up, though, just to make it a little bit easier. W cubed and W, because we want groups of 3. And what do you want to do with this G to the 8? G3, G3, off of G3, G3, G2. So everything with the cubed is going to come out front. Everything without the cubed is going to stay behind. What happens to the 3 cubed when he comes out front? Just 3. And because there's a 4 already there, let's just combine it. It's going to be a 12. What happens to the W cubed when he comes outside? Just W. What happens to the first G? He's just G. And then we're going to have another G, so we're going to have G times G. G squared. And what's left in there? And I understand that does not look simplified. I get that, because it's crazy. You just need to trust me to a mathematician, that is simplified. 